Season ticket members, sweet partners, welcome to a hangout with Coach Mike Vrabel. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Coach, it is so good to see you to be talking about some ball. We are, uh, we're fired up and ready to go. And literally hundreds are joining us tonight for what we hope will maybe be the first of a few hangouts that we do this offseason. How are you? I'm doing great, guys. I miss seeing you. And hopefully, uh, with the, if the response is is good enough to for yours and, and Amy's precious time. We will we will continue to have these, but I missed you guys, and uh, it's great being here. Amy, I, I thought there was beer and pizza involved. I don't think that's true, but nonetheless, we have football, right? Absolutely, and I think football is better than beer and pizza most of the time. Or all three together is pretty All three time. together <laughs> is pretty go. great. <laughs> so hopefully... Some of you who are enjoying the hangout, maybe you're having some pizza or, or something good and the beverage of your choice. And we're going to take questions from you throughout the program, and we're going to compile a few. Amy, how are we doing that? How are we getting those loaded up? Well, Mike, Keith, I'm glad you asked, because if you go to Twitter and use hashtag Titans Hangout, hashtag Titans Hangout, I will be getting all of these questions on Twitter. I'll put them all together, and we'll ask Coach Frabel and hopefully get you some answers. So hashtag Titans Hangout. All right, so keep like, Amy busy. Keep her busy. That's right. <laughs> That's the idea. So I would guess it's safe to say you're digging deep into the draft right now, aren't you, Mike? Well, we are into that draft. We're into the uh, the virtual part of the draft where um, the the roles and, and and the world we live by is is vastly different than what it's been. You know, the combine isn't going to be um, what we're used to, and so that'll that'll take some some manipulation, but we're already started. We've, we've met with some players on Zoom, and I think that process is, is off to a great start. All right, we've gotten a lot of questions, preview questions, if you will, about staff, because that's been sort of the biggest news that the Titans have made since the end of the season. So Amy and I are gonna dive into a few of those because we don't want to be repetitive and duplicate throughout the course of the program. So I'm gonna start off asking you about the defensive staff and Mike, as Amy and I've gotten to know you, we know you're a guy who studies like crazy. You take your time, you go through processes. I know you work through a lot of things after the season, determining what you were going to do with your defensive staff. You looked at a lot of options. Tell us why you settled on Shane Bowen to formally lead the defense as the defensive coordinator. Well, I think first and foremost, I think Shane is, um, you know, qualified. He's, he's very intelligent. Um, I think he communicates well. I think he's got a great vision for, for what we want to do. Um, I think he's always looking to improve, which that'll start with, with me and, and John and our organization. You know, we have to improve every year. That's what this business is about. I think Shane uh, will do that. I think that the assistant coaches have to do that. And, and then obviously the, the players ultimately have to do that as well. How will the mechanics of the defensive staff and how everything works, how will they be different than last year now that he is formally the defensive coordinator? You know, I mean, I think that's that that's a lot of, you know, nothing really is going to change. You know, I mean, I'm still going to have an input on what I feel like is all three phases of our football team. If, if I didn't feel like I was somewhat competent to be able to talk to Auk about special teams, or, or give input on defense and, and offense, um, I wouldn't do that. But, but I like doing that. I like being a part of all three phases. Um, and then that won't change. Um, Shane, Shane is going to just now have the title that, that everybody, um, you know, covets. But, you know, we, we, Ryan Crow, you know, we did make some moves in, in around uh, the, the coaching staff. Ryan Crow is going to come back over from special teams and, and work a little bit on defense uh, with the outside linebackers. Uh, we've hired uh, a former player and, and a college coach, uh, Kenechi Udezi, who um, we're really excited about to, to, to help us with the defensive line and some of the quality control stuff. Um, 
and, and then um, Zach Kerr was with the defensive line last year, and he'll help Jim Hazlitt with the inside linebackers. Um, you know, Zach will be coming over, he's still handling some of the quality control stuff, but but given some perspective with the inside linebackers and, you know, he's unique. He was an offensive coordinator in college and, and really like what, what Zach's done so far with us as well. All right. Let me go back to Ryan Crow for just a second, because Shane Bowen was the outside linebackers coach. Now you give Ryan Crow that opportunity, two things. How much do you think that potentially helps Shane that he doesn't have a specific position and he can focus on being the defensive coordinator and also why is Ryan Crow the right answer to coach the outside back? Yeah, well, Matt Edwards, you know, Matt Edwards worked with that group last year. Uh, wanted to get Matt back onto uh, special teams. And I felt like the way that him and him and Craig worked together uh, two years ago was something that I, that I liked. Um, you, you know, Ryan is, is, is a young, um, exciting coach who was creative, um, who has background in, in really all three phases having worked in on offense and, and defense with us and then special teams. And so, you know, I think that he, um, you know, brings a, brings a background that that's going to allow these guys to, to learn, but also, you know, I think be, be creative and in his role uh, as he coaches that position. Finally, Mike, last one on defense for me, how much more important was the thought about continuity and staff knowing that it certainly feels like your off season is going to again, be very virtual. Well, I mean, I think um, the, the continuity is something that I always covet. I think that, you know, we, we have to continue to, to push each other and we have to think uh, differently and, and, and do some things differently. We don't have to change in what we believe in, uh, but, but we're going to have to do some things differently uh, in all three phases throughout our organization but continuity is certainly something that, that I believe in. I, I believe in developing uh, players. I, de I believe in developing coaches. Uh, and when you can do that uh, and be able to promote from within, uh, it, it allows a, a structure for, for opportunity. Now, Coach, I want to continue with that theme of continuity, but ask you about the offense, because Todd Downing was promoted from tight ends coach to offensive coordinator when Arthur Smith left to become a head coach. Why was he such a good fit for that position specifically? What do you see in him that makes you feel like your offense is in good hands? Well, I think he's got a great understanding of our offense and what we're trying to do. Um, having um, really assisted Arthur uh, in, in as, a, as a tight end coach, but also, you know, someone that could help him and, and Todd's called plays before. Uh, and he helped Arthur and, and met extensively with him. Uh, was a large part of what we did in the red zone and, uh, and, and his knowledge and his passion. And again, I, I think he, you know, did a great job with that unit that he had. And, you know, that's all what we always strive for is do the best job at the job that you have. And you know, I think some opportunities will come for you. So there was a position left open in the tight ends room and Luke Steckel was moved into that role. Now Luke's a guy that we've seen kind of work through the coaching ranks. Why is now the right time to give him his own room? Well, because he's, he's earned it. I think he's earned that opportunity. He's earned the right. I've watched him work, um, you know, kept Luke, you know, here when, when I got here, um, he, he's done nothing but in Excel in, in every uh, job that we've given him. Um, and again, he, he worked hand in hand with Arthur last year uh, to help Arthur uh, with things that he needed. Um, I challenged Luke to, to, to do some things last year to improve. I felt like he did that. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to watch him work with, you know, work with that group. Well, it really seems that you were pleased with the performance of the Titans offensive coaching staff and the Titans offense was really dynamic in 2020. How much do you attribute that success to the teachers that you have on that side of the ball? Well, I mean, I think I'm always going to attribute the success to the players, Amy. I mean, that's, that, that's what this game comes down to. Um, having had an opportunity to play it and, and coach it. But I, I do think that we have great teachers. I think that, that you know, I, when I see drills that, that Tony Dews does with Derrick Henry translate onto the field, I know that you guys, you know, are at practice and you watch those things. And as you're watching our games and covering them, 
And you're like, yeah, I can remember when Tony was working on that with Derek and, you know, Derek's such a large part of what we do and, you know, drills that, that Rob does with AJ or, you know, drills that Todd did with Janu or any of them. And, and that has to translate over to the field. And uh, I think that we've done that now, you know, we don't have all the answers offensively. I mean, there were games where, you know, we didn't, we didn't play very well, you know, so I don't want to sit there and say that we have all the answers. You know, we have to play better against, you know, elite defenses, you know, Chicago and green Bay. We didn't play very well. Uh, the, the second Ravens game, you know, so Pittsburgh, there's, there's some things that we have to, to do better. And, uh, and I'm confident that we'll, you know, we will. Right around the corner, three Titans fans, actually four, because there's a couple and then two other Titans fans are going to get a chance to ask Mike Vrabel a question in person. You can send in a question via Twitter. Tell them, Amy, how you do it. Hashtag Titans hangout. Go right now. All right. So we're going to get in as many as we can. But before we jump into more questions, let's take a look at the top five moments of the Titans 2020 season. His career long, not at altitude, is 58. Right hash for the lead. Snap, set, kick. Good! Henry is in the gun. Okay. It's the King Cat. Henry running to the left. Into the end zone, <laughs> touchdown Titans! Yo! Titans win! 42 to 36! As Arthur Smith comes with the King Cat for the final five yards and the victory! Play fake, oh, Tannehill yeah. rolling to the right, he can throw it, he can run it, he'll pull back in the last minute and throw a touchdown pass to Janu Smith! Very few people thought this could happen tonight as the Titans, after 16 days off, get it done again. Right hand, 37 yards to win it. Snap, Sloman's kick is up. His kick hits the upright and goes through. Yes, it's yes, good! Yes, 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 yes! And the 2020 AFC South champions reside in the 6-1. Five. Tannehill takes the snap, gives Henry. Henry charging forward for five yards at a first down at 2,000. History for the King. It was hard to pick just five. There is no doubt about it. But I hope you enjoyed that. And we're so excited that three I, again, I got it wrong. It's four because because I've, I've got Shannon and Randy together. But we're going to get three questions out of four people for Coach Mike Vrabel. Amy Wells and I are thrilled to have them with us. Let's I bet Shannon. I bet Shannon asked the question for their family. Just to hunch. You think Shannon's talking? <laughs> just a hunch. That yeah, Shannon and Randy from Hopkinsville, better known to all of us locals as Hoptown. How's the weather up there? little snowy, but it's getting better. Titans football is getting ready to come up for us. All right. These good folks sit in Section 237. Shannon, Randy, fire away for Mike Vrabel. All right. First of all, Coach, we like the way the direction the team's going. You're doing an outstanding <clears> job. <throat> but with that being said, our pass defense in the bottom eight last year, what are we going to do to turn that around? Well, first of all, thank you guys uh, for your support, uh, being season ticket members. You know, we look forward to getting everybody back into the stadium, uh, being able to interact with our fans. Um, and, and absolutely, Randy, this is this is a passing league. Uh, this is, um, you know, they pay the quarterbacks 30 million for for a reason. And, and that's something that we have to improve on. Um, and, and, and it starts with it starts with me. It starts with our coaching. It starts with uh, then it then it goes to personnel. You know, and at the end of the day, you got to have some guys that can rush and you got to have some guys that can cover. Um, and I do think that we're going to still continue to be multiple and play, you know, some different coverages. And I think that that's important. Uh, that's that's been proven uh, to, to work. And uh, those are some things that we'll continue to do. But, uh, you know, that is something that you have to do in the National Football League. You have to affect the quarterback. You have to be on body. You, you, you can't sit there and and, and play 
Um, a lot of zone. I think you can mix it up, but at the end of the day, you got to have guys that can that can match up with people. You lost the bet, Coach, because Randy asked the question. I absolutely <laughs> thought that she was that question. <laughs> you, anything you want to throw in there, Shannon? Because it's your time too. You're on the program. Well, I love football, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> what do you, love, up, what do you love about football? Because I always ask our draft guys, like, okay. hey, I mean, they're every they all love football. They they don't they don't like love everything else that comes with it, but they love football. What do you love about football, Shannon? You know, I grew up with Dallas and the Steelers, and that's the era that I come from. And um, just it was a part of every every Sunday, and you know that's how I grew up, and so like Margaret said earlier, having the NFL team come to Nashville, it's just been a blessing that we can go see NFL football here. It's just been wonderful. What's your favorite position to kind of watch? What's your, <laughs> I love the. I, I love the blue crew drum line. <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, quarterback center Quarter center. There, ben Jones. There you go. That's great stuff. Hey, listen, uh, Shannon and Randy, you're representing an important part of Titans Nation, and that is all of our fans in Western Kentucky who have been with us since day one. Uh, thanks for being season ticket members, and keep all those people up in the bluegrass uh, going with the Tennessee Titans as well. It's a different blue down here, but they can be for that too. <laughs> and go Titans. Yeah, go Titans. That away. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Rashad. Rashad from Section 121, you're on the program. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. This is exciting. Uh, it is exciting. Really appreciate what y'all are doing with the season ticket holders being, a, I guess, a lifelong inaugural season ticket member. And Coach Rabel, pleasure to meet you again. I met you, I guess, the first time you hosted a radio show when you first came. I think it was your birthday, if I'm not mistaken, and got to take a picture with you. So, uh my question is, there's always a risk versus a reward factor in signing a star later in their career. With the tale of two players, Tom Brady and Jadavian Clowney, one who continues to pay dividends two decades into his career, the GOAT, and another which did not pan out for whatever reasons, injuries, how do you approach the risk versus rewards factor with J.J. Watt during this phase of his career? Well, one, you know, first of all, I want to thank you, you know, just like Randy and Shannon and all our other season ticket members I want to thank you uh, for your excitement for for having the jersey on and, and, and buying our apparel and being excited about football. Um, you know, those are those are two great examples. And, you know, when you go into free agency, there, there's a lot of things about player acquisition that go into it. What's best for your football team? Um you know, cost basis is, is, is also a part of it. Um, the, the fit is, is, a, is, a, is a part of it. And then the need and, and then what, what you need, what you're, you feel like your team needs. And so, you know, you mentioned J.J. Watt. There'll be other, you know, veteran players that become available that we'll have to um, have discussions on. And we have had discussions on J.J. Watt. And, you know, John alluded that to that the other day. So, um you know, those are all, those are a lot of things that go into it uh, um, about, you know, bringing in free agents, certainly ones that are past, you know, 30 or in the back half of their career. Um, and so those are all things that you wage and, and you determine. It's a really good question. You want to introduce your friend there? Yeah, my friend, my, this is my son. He's uh, up, Yusuf. Coach? He's in, uh, at Belmont. At away. Well, he gets, you Another got some basketball one going right now, don't you? What's that? You got some basketball going at Belmont right yeah, now. We're doing oh, good. yeah, the best. And, uh, man, we love football, too. We were playing football outside in the backyard in the snow. We live near in the corner of uh, Forest Hills and Green Hills. And, boy, that snow was incredible. Almost yeah. remind, uh, reminded of that New England versus Raiders game, right, Mike? Uh, Coach yep. Rabel? Yeah, exactly. That, uh, that's a great memory. I'm, I mean, you love football. And that was, um, you know, the old tuck rule. That was a night game. And that, that snow started. And, and, and really, there wasn't much snow during the day. And it started around 3 o'clock. And it snowed all the way through to 830. And, you know, there were 10 or 12 inches of snow on the field. And that kick that Adam Vinatieri made 
will be the greatest kick uh, in NFL history uh, just because of the conditions. It was hard even just to play football, let alone kick, kick a 50-yard field goal. Um, we were joking with the coaches this morning on a staff meeting. We're, we're working from home, but, you know, that back in the day, we would put jeans on and sweatpants over our jeans and go outside and play football. And uh, that, that was our version of snow pants. Well, y'all, y'all played, at least you had snow versus that ice game, that uh, cold game in the playoffs in two, January 2004. Yeah. Uh, when, y'all, when y'all beat us, and I was wondering if you're the one who caused uh, Drew Bennett to drop that pass at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember, I think, in that game, I hit Steve McNair as hard as I thought I'd hit anybody. And I was just praying that he fell down. And I just opened my eyes. And I'm like, please tell me he fell down. And and he did. So thank goodness. That's funny. Cause all my kids, now they're all in college and high school. But they all went to the Titans game as as when they were under two as lap children. So they grew up watching the Titans since 99. And it's like, it's a blessing to have you all here. I mean, I was talking to uh, um, Sean Mahalik that, even up till today when we go to the Titans game and I see that NFL logo growing up a Steelers fan in the seventies, it's like, you can't underappreciate it. I mean, it's just a blessing. So thank you. Well, we appreciate your support. We really do. Thank you, Rashad. And keep keep the Bruins going strong there. Want want to see them keep it up. All right, Margaret. Ah. Section 332. I love your, I love your, uh, is, is that ship lap? Oh, no. It's actually not. It's actually from a hundred-year-old horse barn. Barn Even wood. Better. Yeah, she just yeah. popped her ship lap or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I, was showing my, I was trying to show my HGTV there. Hopefully, see, there's an HGTV scout out there. Is it? Chip and Joanna, you've been watching Chip and yeah, Joanna. I watch Chip and Joanna. They're not my favorites, but I, we I we want. we like you here, Mike. We like you, you here. Thank you, yeah. thank you. You're nice to say that. Hey, thanks for doing this. And uh, you're, you're in the three holes, so you get a chance to ask Coach a question. Rock and roll. Yes. So I've been a season ticket holder also since 99, and we're so glad that you are here. We're so glad that you're here, Coach. Um, thank you, Mother. I have a gr- We're happy to be here, too. Yes, so I have a draft question. So my question is, for your first pick, are you going to pick an offensive player or a defensive player? Well, hopefully we can pick the best player, Margaret. Hopefully we can pick the best player, and um, you know we we have to we have to do a, a great job at, at player acquisition, whether that be our, our activity in free agency and and then the draft, uh, which is something that we'll have to continue to to do a great job at, and and we will have some guys that you know maybe didn't get a whole lot of playing time this year that coming out of that draft from last year. And then we'll have to add to it with, with a group of, of young players that, that we'll be excited about. Great question, Margaret. Thank you. All right. And Shannon and Randy, Rashad, Margaret, season ticket members, thank you for your support. And thanks for being with us tonight to ask questions in person. It's not easy to do, Amy. No, this is hard work. I'm glad it's, they took it, some of the heavy lifting off. But you're in front of a lot of people at, throwing out your question. And, Coach, I got to say, they they did pretty well. They did great. We love you too, Amy. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Amy. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You. So next thing we do, we're taking your questions via Twitter. Hashtag Titans Hangout. Amy Wells, this is your time to shine, just like when we do the OTP cues on the official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP. Hopefully you all subscribe and you all listen each week. This is the time. Hashtag Titans Hangout. Amy Wells has questions. Amy, I will step aside. Fire away. Thank God, Amy. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's like we got it. Voice of the Titans. We understand. I know, I know. We've got to let Mike keep recharge his batteries a little bit. So I'm going to take over. We have so many questions from Titans fans. So many questions. And I just can't wait to get started. So this first one is from Jack. He's in Arlington, Tennessee. And he asks, can you give us some insight into how both John Robinson's staff and your staff work together to make the best decisions in free agency and the draft? Absolutely. And 
you know, we've had our free agent meetings, you know, so uh, after the season, we, we do a lot of self-scout. We, we, we are thorough in our self-scout of, of what we are as a team. We have evaluations with John. Our coaches speak uh, to John and to myself about their positions, about the players, uh, about their future, about the vision that they have for those players. Um, at that point in time, then, then we send them off with a free agent list of potential uh, players at their position for them to evaluate. Uh, John and I obviously do the same thing. Those coaches will have them come back and we'll meet with them. Uh, they'll give us their vision on those players. If they feel like they're a fit, would they like to coach them, what they know about them. And, and then we, we take that information. We take the, the scouts information and what John and I feel is best for the team, you know, and then you try to make something work you know, financially and, 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 and fit wise for the football team. The same would be said for the draft, the player, the coaches um, all have an, uh, a position uh, that they'll look at and that they'll evaluate. Uh, scouts have um, areas and crossover checks. So one scout may be a Southeastern scout and someone from the Midwest may do a crossover and, and, and look at his guys and, and his area. Uh, but but really, the, the biggest impact that our scouts and our coaches make is in the post draft. And it's something that, you know, is critical to, to filling out a roster. And we've had some success here, Mike and Amy and, and all our fans with with those guys that for whatever reason pass through the draft. And there's a lot of good football players that that go undrafted for whatever reason. And uh, and we have a great system and those scouts and coaches work hard at that. And and then we try to to add some players to our roster uh, once the draft is over. So that that's really the, the you know, I think there is some uh, quite a bit of inclusion uh, with that process from from a coaching standpoint and and being able to work with scouts. All right. I've got a question from hashtag Titans Hangout. This is Josiah, and he's kind of keeping in the same vein of how you and John Robinson work together. He said, I'm a huge fan of what you and J-Rob are doing with the cap projected to decrease how do you plan on handling that while still improving the team and re-signing some free agents? Um, yeah, I mean, there's decisions that have to be made every year financially. I mean, this is that's this is the the nature of the National Football League. Uh, there is a business side of it, uh, and that you have to make some decisions. and And as we always try to do, we try to do them with the best interest of the Tennessee Titans in mind. Um, and sometimes that's that's re-signing our own guys. Uh, and sometimes, you know, that players go and, you know, they, they they bargained as an NFL football player. I mean, they they collectively bargained and they fought for free agency. And, and I was able to be a part of that. Uh, and so the players, that is their number one right uh, as a player when they reach free agency is to take advantage of that. And sometimes, you know, somebody's willing to offer them and compensate them uh, more than what their current team uh, is willing to. And I think that that's their right to, to go and do that for their family. Sometimes it works that you're able to resign your own guys as well. Well, speaking of compensation, Steven asks, how often does a team keep a less expensive player, maybe over a better player to try and stay under the salary cap, or do you have the opportunity to adjust salary? Well, we, you know, that, that's a, that's a two-way street. You know, every deal is a two-way street, you know, it's got to be good for the team and it's got to be good for the player. And, and I would say um, I learned early on probably in my fifth or sixth year of the national football league that, that at the end of the day, the business of the national football league is that the player's job, the, the, the coach and the, the team's job is to find a better, younger, cheaper player. And every veteran's job is to not allow that to happen. And I always felt that as a player uh, that they were trying to find someone that was better and cheaper than me in every draft. That's why I watched every draft and watched every outside linebacker they drafted in the second or third round and uh, knew that that guy was going to be the guy that was picked to, to potentially take my job. And it was up to me to, to not let that happen. And that at the end of the day is, is really what the national football league is about. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of veteran guys that, you know, regardless of, of their compensation, you, you, you just can't get rid of them. You, you know what I mean? They're, they're too valuable to the football team. Mortimer from Chattanooga, Tennessee, asks, given 
that we need a better pass rush this season, do you think that it is more likely to happen via free agency or the draft? Uh, I mean, it could happen really in both. I mean, I think that that's, you know, when you have needs, you, you, you always are looking to fill them, uh, you know, in the best way. And, and that may be in free agency and then it could potentially be in the draft and you could find a player that you like uh, at different parts of the draft uh, that, that could help you out, um, you know, on the edge as well. Coach, this next question is one of my favorites. I'm excited about it. This is from Kaysen in Thompson Station. He says, what is your favorite thing about being a head coach? Yeah, I mean, obviously winning is my favorite thing. Winning. But, but I would say that um, having the responsibility to stand in front of a football team uh, and look out there and, and understand uh, that everybody's got we, – we all got some stuff going on. And sometimes the guy next to – each other they don't know what stuff each other's got going on but it and I I've been uh been given a great responsibility to be able to understand uh, what each of them are going through uh and and that's um that's something I take very seriously uh, to try to help those guys through that um, because you know this is a you know the the problems that everybody has that are around us they don't fail to exist because we coach in the NFL or we play in the NFL and I think that that's the cool thing for me is to, to try to help guys and, and improve them uh, both on the field and off the field. Well, Coach, you have a player who played pretty well in 2020, and his name is Derrick Henry. Uh, Brandon from Memphis asks, what are your thoughts on Derrick Henry winning the Offensive Player of the Year, and how do you get him to build on last year's performance while constantly evolving the offense to match everybody's strengths? Well, uh, extremely excited and, and happy uh, for Derek to, to get that recognition. Uh, had a fantastic season. Uh, he's fun to coach. Um, you know, he understands you know, that, that this offense and this team is going to be put on his shoulders, and he's very comfortable with that. And I hear a lot, um, you know, about his his carries and his workload and you know, he, he's, he's up to that challenge and he knows what he's signing up for. And, you know, if we felt like that was a detriment to his, his, his play, you know, we would do that, but we feel like that there's a fine line that, that we, you know, try to keep and, and Derek's honest with us and how we have to, to manage him through throughout the week, but he is diligent in his preparation uh, to make sure that he's ready to go on Sunday. Uh, with that being said, I think that you have to continue to be creative and how we, you know, get him the ball and, and, and run the football. Uh, we, we have what we call bread and butter and, you know, you have to expand on that so that, you know, teams just can't sit there and, and, and play one, one certain scheme. And we'll continue to try to do that. And then also, you know, do, do things that we think can help and complement the other players on, on the offense. Coach, hashtag Titans Hangout is rocking and rolling right now. People really? are sending in their questions like crazy. Here's one from Brian. He asks, what is your biggest mindset going into the offseason and heading into next season? Well, Brian, I think that uh, it's about improvement. It's about reflection. It's about, um, you know, things that we believe in. You know, I mean, things and taking what we think and believe in our culture uh, and, and seeing where you need to change and seeing where there were breakdowns. Um, and I think that that's the exciting point uh, that everybody has at this point in time in the season. And, and I would say that that's just my job each and every day is to, to meet with the coaches. But the biggest thing is I want creativity. You know, this is the time for creativity. This is the time to, to come up with ideas and see what we think of them. And I don't want guys to say, hey, this sounds crazy. I mean – it's like that commercial. It's only weird or crazy if it doesn't work. And, you know, so we want to be creative. We want to try things that are, that are different. And that's what the off season's for. Well, coach, along that same mindset, Cash asks, what is some advice that you would give an aspiring college coach or any coach really? Well, I mean, the advice, I think that it's to try to improve each and every day. It's to do the best job and the job that you have. You've always heard me say this um, and, and not be a coach that, you know, is always looking for the next job. 
and always looking to try to, to work the phones. I think that that's something that always comes up and, you know, being loyal to your team and loyal to your staff and loyal to your organization is something that uh, is critical and it's something that I value um, a lot, a lot here and, and everywhere that I've been. And so, you know, continue to find ways to professional develop, you know, can find ways to, to, to meet and to Zoom. I think everybody is so much more comfortable uh, with Zoom now and, and sharing a screen and putting film on and a whiteboard on the film. And, you know, so it's going to allow coaches and people to, to gather from all parts of the, the country to, to be able to talk football and talk things that, that we all love. And, you know, our coaches are going to be doing that. Um, I've asked them, that was part of our staff meeting this morning, was by, you know, after the end of the weekend, I'd like to have three or four ideas that each of you guys are going to do for professional development. And I don't need dates and, you know, when it's going to happen, but I want ideas on, you know, who you may want to meet with and who you may want to reach out to and, and, and work with and, and try to get better at your job. Coach, we talked earlier in the program about the continuity within your coaching staff, but turnover is inevitable, especially with the professional development that you mentioned. People move on sometimes. John from Nashville asks, how does the turnover in assistant coaches affect your ability to develop young players? Well, you know, we have to, we have, to have good young coaches in here uh, that, that can also – you know, help when we hire a, a, what, what you would consider a quality control coach, you know, we're not looking for somebody that just is in data entry. You know, we want, we want men and women that can coach football that can take a group of younger guys and, and go out to the mobile classroom and provide um, an understanding and help these guys learn. You know, you have to be able to find ways to develop players and, you know, we, we have a, a, a thing that we believe in in developing those guys is you, know, you got to have some small victories along the way. You got to be creative. You got to get something. There, there has to be some testimony to say, Hey, you know, I did this with this player and you know, they had a lot of success. And then along the way, they have to see themselves improve. And if they're always at the third team, then you can tell them all you want about how much better they're getting. But until they see themselves move up the depth chart or get an opportunity, um, you know, the, the, the growth is going to be hard to come by. And, you know, I tell them they're all going to get an opportunity. Some of them are going to get more than others. That's the nature of this business. But, but every player that is on our roster is going to have at least one opportunity to show us, and most importantly, their teammates, uh, that they can, they can make an impact and add value to this team. Coach, we got another question kind of related to the draft on hashtag Titans Hangout. He asks, Coach, how do you weigh positional needs versus best player available in the draft? If a player is ranked 15th on your board at 22, but he also plays a position that you have stocked, but you need a spot, where is, where, what are you doing there? How do you, how do you navigate well, this word problem that we yeah, have? I, mean, I, think that I can't even say. Yeah, no, that's something that John and I d discuss and, and have conversations about. Um, you know, ultimately he has, you know, his philosophy, but it's all about, you know, where can you get players? Are there more players in the draft than there are in free agency? And if there's a heavy group at one position, you say, okay, you know, maybe we take this best player and know that we still got, you know, five or six players on our board at this position that we like. And, and that's why we look at our draft board. And ultimately I think this is what I've really noticed is you're going to have clusters of players. You're going to have players that are clumped together. You're going to have three offensive guards. Okay, I'm going to use Nate Davis as an example. We, we were in a group. Nate was in a group with three players. And around the time that he got picked, you know, we needed to determine which player out of that group was going to be best for us. And I think we made a, a great decision, you know, seeing the player that he's become and, and, and will continue to, to get better. But that you, you look at them and there's going to always be receivers that are kind of clumped in there. They got the, the ranking is what the ranking and it's, you know, AJ's in here with these other three guys and it's like, okay, how do you stack them? Which one's best for you? Uh, somebody else may think this guy is. And 
that's really when I watch the draft, that's kind of how when your draft boards where you want it, you, you kind of see these clumps of players and they all kind of go, you know, around the same area. You just got to figure out which one's best for you. Coach Michael from Hendersonville says, will you be looking for a kicker in the upcoming draft? He's not messing around. He just wants to know who you're going to pick right off the bat. Uh, you know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, if there's a kicker available that we like, I mean, again, I, the only way that I can evaluate kickers is if they, they make them and, and we have got to, we've got to make more kicks. And then I don't, I don't know if it's me, maybe, maybe it is, I, I don't know, but you know, we, their job is to make them. And, and I, and I can't tell them how to kick them straight. I can just see if they go straight or go through. Um, we've had some block, but you know, we, we feel like, you know, we're going to have to address that position and, and see what Steven's going to do. And, you know, he's, his contract's up and, you know, what he wants to do, but you know, we're going to have to have guys in here that have, you know, competition and, and that can, we can find somebody that's going to make them. Coach, this is from Lawson. He says, you were a great player and you are a great coach. From your experience in both roles, do you think it's more difficult for young players to understand the physical and mental challenges of succeeding in the NFL? Do I think it's difficult for young players? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. I think it's, you know, what, what their idea of the National Football League is may not be really what it is. It, it's not about the, the, the glitz and the glamour and the all pro and the cars and the and the G wagons and, and the, the penthouse suites. I mean, it's about a grind, you know I mean? It is a grind to, um, to show up every day, to, to add value, to, to, to show the team that they, um, you know, can't, can't live without you. And that is a daily grind. And, you know, you have to prove your value to the football team each and every day. Um, and I think that our guys understand that it's, it's certainly not perfect, but that that's the reality of the national football league, that it's hard. It's difficult. It's competitive. It's the most competitive sport, uh, in the world. And, um, that's why we love it. Mike Keith, that was crazy. So many good questions. And there's about 300 more that we couldn't even get to. So we're going to have to do this again at some point. We're going to have to. We're going to have to do it again. Um, but he mentioned G-Wagon, which I know is what you drive. So I figured I'd toss it back to you now in your G-Wagon. <laughs> he said it's great in the snow. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Super. Great, great traction. Thank um, you, Amy. That was a great job, Amy. Well, well that's thanks, yeah, she, she does that well. Well played, Miss Wells. <laughs> Very well done. Um, Mike, is function, when you actually close the yapper, Mike, she does okay. Oh, I, I know that's why that's why she took it she told me just be quiet I got this but before we go with the season ticket members Mike I, I know you love doing these with the season ticket members you you enjoy the interaction if if you would just kind of give them a little thought on where you think we are right now as an organization what's coming up and and just I, I don't know just give us a little sign off here and then I'll close it out well, I mean, I think that we, at least I, I got here and they asked me what I wanted the culture to be. I wanted the culture to be about winning and competitiveness. And it, it, it's always going to be about winning and, and being competitive in, in what we do, uh, how, we, how we practice, and, how, and most especially how we play. And I think we've done that. Um, but we have to continue to improve. I mean, it's, it, I mean we have to have some sustained success to continue to, to find ways to play for championships. Uh, that, that will always be the goal. Um, but I think that we do have a, a culture here that has shown that it can withstand, you know, some tough times, you know, when you lose a few games in a row or, you know, you don't practice for two weeks because of a, a, a pandemic and, and go out there and play. I think they're resilient. I think that they um, are great teammates. And again, it's it's something that I'm excited to be able to coach. Uh, very honored um, and, and gracious to be able to, to be the head coach of the Titans with this group of players. Um, we, we understand that we have to continue to get better. We have to continue to be creative uh, in what we do. 
and, and that's that's where we're at. And, and again, I, I appreciate this. We'll do this again. If there's interest from the fans, I want to do this because I know that when we had 10,000 people in there, that it sounded like we had 30 or 40,000 and it did. And, and that, that is a testament to those fans that came um, and, and supported us and supported us through this entire season and will support us uh, going into next year. Michael, thanks for doing this. You got it, guys. And to uh, Amy, great job as usual. Uh, to the fans, uh, you've been great. Like he was talking about how you responded in the playoff game and the noise you made. They've been like that since day one. And we appreciate you more than we could ever say. I want to remind everybody the deadline to renew is, is Monday. So make sure and, and get in there because if you've seen the schedule, we you know we're going to need your help in 2021 at Nissan Stadium. We've got work to do because we want to do the heavy lifting that goes to that next place. So we'll do this again for Mike Vrabel, Amy Wells, Mike Keith. Thank you so much for joining us for the Titans Hangout with the head coach. Thanks, guys. Tighten up.